That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? on Third Eye Vision's um, show. Uh, pleasure to thank, thank you for inviting me. I'm Andy Craddock from Birmingham, UK, uh, part of Birmingham Wheelchair Basketball, which is part of the national governing body for British Wheelchair Basketball. Um, as you know, last couple of weeks, you've hopefully seen the, the Paralympics and wheelchair bas basketball has been prevalent in those, of course. And, you know, congratulations, Team USA, for winning the gold. Um, you know, obviously, Team GB men won the bronze and... You know, it's been a fantastic uh, pleasure to watch and be part of. Obviously, we've been we've played wheelchair basketball now for about four years. Our clubs have been running. Um, I've I've coached for over eleven years wheelchair basketball, been involved in disability and inclusion sport for over twenty years, um, and it's been a pleasure. I mean, you know, if if you don't know what wheelchair basketball is, get down to your local club where wherever you are and have a go at it. It's the most inclusive sport in the world. Um, you know, it started in uh, 1945 in the US, Birmingham, Alabama, I believe. And it came over to the UK in 1948 and it's grown from there. And, you know, it's probably the biggest inclusion sport in the world. OK, for those who don't know what wheelchair basketball is, tell them what it is. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's obviously we, you know, we five players on the court like like your able bodied sport. In, in chairs, there's a classification system of one to five, five being an able-bodied player, but you know everybody who plays the sport can get on that court and play wheelchair basketball. The disability, you know, the, the wheelchair doesn't define your disability, so anybody can get involved, everybody can come along and play, and it's five on five uh, against each other. Same rules as the able-bodied running game, and you know it's it's just completely basketball really that's all it is just di it's different to the chair so in essence so like so you just summed it up uh the last part you said it's just just like uh regular basketball except you're playing in a wheelchair right so i'm visually impaired so i'm trying to uh visualize how it's, how it actually is played so uh it's just like regular basketball except you're sitting down right that's right yeah i mean yeah the hoop is the hoop is still 10 foot um, you know, the, the rules are the same. You've still got three seconds in the key. You know, you still have the 24 second clock. You know, you, you've still got eight seconds to get across that, that halfway court to go on offense. The same fouls, the same five, five personal fouls or team fouls and the free throws. Everything else is exactly the same, same rules. Um, it's just that you're in a chair. Um, you know, and obviously with your screens, we call them picks. So you have offensive picks and defensive picks. And, and yeah, the, the sport is fantastic to play. I mean, I've played it now for 11 years. I've, I've played, I coach, I have my own club. Um, and we keep growing. And I think the sport will keep growing continuously throughout the world, which, you know, is, is what it should be. And, you know, all these inclusive sports we play, everybody has the opportunity um, to play a sport and be involved in something and, and represent their, their country or be involved in the community that supports inclusion and diversity this is amazing oh man <laughs> so so what position do you play um i'm i'm a shooting guard so you know it's 
for me, it's a case of staying at the high post, uh, maybe looking for those that three point specialist shots. Um, I'm, you know, um, and that's that's what I play. I mean, nowadays, because because of, of my age and I'm a bit old, um, it's it's I I look to the young people and young young players. So I coach more than I play, but you know, it's it's great to get in the chair and have that freedom um, to play. And, and I think the difference is now, if you, if you look at going into schools and playing wheelchair basketball and, and getting young people into chairs, the difference is they don't see the disability. They see getting in the chair, having a spin, having a push, that freedom and breaking down those barriers to disability. That's what it's all about. That's exactly yeah. what it's all about. Now, how difficult is it really? Like when, because you have to, of course, you have to use your hands to, to, to maneuver uh, uh, in the wheelchair. How <clears throat> difficult is it when you, when you're doing that versus, you know, trying to dribble the ball and what have you, how, how, you know, tell, explain to the audience how difficult it is in that aspect then. And then secondly, how you're able to maneuver while, while in the wheelchair as you dribble, dribble down the court. Well, there's, I mean, third eye, there's, there's no lateral movement in, in wheelchair basketball because obviously, you know, being in a chair, your, your movement is different completely. So, you know, obviously we think about the wheel as being a clock. So 12 o'clock at the top of the wheel is stop. And if you move your hands back, that's, that's 11. And then you push till three. So 11 till three is a forward push. Three to 11 is a backward push. And if you take one hand off and pull and push on the other wheel, then you can rotate or vice versa, create a pivot. So players obviously use fast hands and the rule in is obviously unlike the running game, you can carry the ball. So the ball is under your lap, but it's two pushes or two touches on your wheels. Then you have to have to bounce the ball. Um, but players, because of, you know, because of their coordination, because of their practice and, and constant practice, they become so in depth at playing the sport and so quick with their hands and the speed of the, to dribble the ball from crossover to rip overs and, and spinning their chairs, you you see even on court players can get up to in some cases up to thirty miles an hour. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. and and it's played on a regular court, right? Yeah, yeah, on the regular court, uh, same court as the running game. You know, the the sport itself. Over over in the states, you've got the obviously the equivalent of the NBA, which is the NWBA, um, and you know and. You know, some of the players that you see across there, we've, we've, I think it's to be Patrick Anderson now, who's moved from the New York Knicks and gone all over the world supporting, because obviously he's renowned to be the best player in the world. Um, and if you, you go on to his YouTube channel, and, and he's, uh, I think he's um, sponsored by Nike, it's an amazing you know attribute to the players that play the sport now that you know you can get be or or do anything that you want to. Okay. Now, one good thing is that, uh, uh, in reference to uh, size, that doesn't really matter, right? Uh, you know, because you all, everyone is sitting down, right? That's right. I mean, you know, the chairs, the chairs themselves. You, you know, we have chairs that um, are customised to each of the players. So we we go to a um, our sponsors or our wheelchair ma manufacturers or sport or sports wheelchairs, mm -hmm. and they they will measure a player up. They will customise the chair to make it conform to their body measurements so you know i mean a lot of the players if you, if you look at their hands in the game they they use their hips so obviously if you fit in that chair nice and snugly and tightly you can use your hips to move but obviously with the classifications of one to five one being the most spinal injury right um, so five which is able body it's it's different for everybody but obviously if you practice practice and practice you can you can play at the highest level for such a long time man that is i, I, I like that because like you know it, it definitely allows individuals to be in, included and whatnot and just in, in, like you were saying when you when you're playing you just forget about the fact that you have an impairment and you're out there just doing what you love to do uh how receptive has, has, has this game been? Because, I mean, I've heard about it, and, and I just, you know, of course, I can't see. i just never been to a game. I just, you know, not, haven't heard too much to talk about it in, in the United States, I guess, because I haven't been following it, if it is, you know, the case. But how has the reception been with, with individuals? Um, I don't know about in the States. And I know, you know, the, the, so you've got the NWBA, um, National League, and it's – you know, it's it's getting bigger, isn't it? And you know, in the UK, we have I think over 180 teams now. Um, we have five divisions in the national league, so we have 
Div 3, uh, Development Div 3, Div 2, Div 1 and Prem. And obviously the Premier Division is your high, you know, high elite players. Um, and now they, they, if they win that, they go and play across Europe. And a lot of players now are, are traveling across the world and they get paid for it. So it's a professional sport. Um, and that's a great opportunity for young people who are at school, who are getting an education, who possibly because of their disability haven't had a chance to do that. I've got an opportunity now to play a sport that they can be a professional athlete and get paid for it and make a living out and become really independent. And, and then uh, and then another thing too is that if, if for someone uh god forbid uh who, who's who's not in a, in, a, in a wheelchair uh suddenly uh becomes uh um you know paralyzed or whatever the case may be or, or you know it has to get in the wheelchair and they play and they're playing basketball this allows them to continue the love for the sport right absolutely i mean yeah we we have we have over 35 players um, in our, our club you know, our youngest is three years old, our oldest is 60 years old. And, you know, and we're so diverse now and, and the opportunities for the community now, regardless if you've got a disability or not, even in, even visually impaired players, we, you know, we come along to our sessions, they'll get me in the chair and we use a guide to support them around the, the court. And then once they get used to the court using tactile um, surfaces, they actually play themselves. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is this is neat. So, uh, <clears throat> what's the name of the team that you play for? I I run Birmingham Wheelchair Basketball in the UK. Um, obviously, we're, we also have a lot of different teams. You've got Warwickshire Bears, um, which is another club that we're associated with. And a lot of our players, we we create pathways so they can go and play in the national league. Um, and obviously, for us, it's a great pleasure to support the community because the. Next year we have the Commonwealth Games. Obviously, you've just had the the Paralympics, and mm -hmm. the idea for us as as the UK and hopefully globally is to inspire more more people in our communities, not only locally but globally and nationally, and, you know, around the world to play our sport and and get more people involved. And obviously, you know, being a community that supports inclusion and diversity, we want to we want to if we we always say that positive action inspires positive outcomes. And if we can inspire one person, that person then goes on to inspire the next and the next. And then you have this kind of butterfly effect where you cause change the world completely. You've definitely inspired me with with this. I mean, <laughs> um, so when, when you're when you're looking for an individual to play, what 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 qualities are you are you looking for? What attributes do they um, have? Do you, do you know what we go by three by three things: fun, safe, and engaging. So for us, it's we believe that regardless who you are in the community whether you've got a disability or not or you know uh, we're an inclusion sport and the beauty is that if it's it's about inspiring your community so regardless of your what ability you've got we will support you to get better at the sport and you know whether that be just socially whether that be just you know you get into a certain level or even to an elite level we will support you and find a way to research that and get you moving to where you want to be as an individual. And, and it's about being independent, isn't it, at the end of the day?